Hi everyone, it's Kalyan, and in today's video, we're gonna focus on how to start. First, I'm gonna review some guidance from SBA, how to start a business in 10 steps, and then I'm gonna do my take on it based on their recommendation. Make sure you keep watching, and I'll see you inside. I've done a quick check on how to start based on the Google searches, and I found this interesting article from the SBA in the US on the 10 steps of how to start a business. So I'm gonna quickly go through them, and then I'm gonna do my take on what do I think is, is valuable in terms of starting a business. It's pretty old fashioned, the way they, they, they describe how to start a business, but I'm quickly gonna go through the 10, 10 points, and I'm gonna give you a little bit of feedback on whether that's needed in the beginning or not of how to start your business. So let's start. So first of all is conduct market research. And conduct market research is something that is valuable, but to an extent, it can also slow you down in terms of starting and just going for the market validation and just starting and testing different things. The thing that can happen during the market research is even though you think your idea is the best, you might find something that is pretty similar to what you're doing right now, and I can actually push you off or push you away um, to actually stop doing and, and focusing on your idea so you can feel discouraged. So I'm kind of mixed on whether to recommend this or not. Uh, it's not in my top list, not in my top eight. <laughs> it's not in my top eight list uh, to do market research, but it's definitely needed once you start doing uh, validation, but I would rather focus on something else and I'll get into it. So second point from the SBA is write your business plan. This is pretty old school. This is pretty much brick and mortar type of business. And I think it's it's a li little bit obsolete uh, nowadays in terms of starting your, your business and writing a business plan. Maybe writing a business plan can show you on what to focus on so you can structure it better in terms of your what's in your head. Uh, but I don't think I ever did a business plan in my life. So maybe that's more focused towards getting investment from a bank or using something as collateral to get a loan from the bank in terms of a business loan. But I wouldn't recommend it. Maybe in terms of structuring your business and like putting details and just following a guideline on how to write it down. But there's a better tools that you can use. So yeah, let's go to the next one. So number three is fund your business. And funding your business, I don't think it's that important in the beginning. I mean, you can start something as a side hustle. You can start something that you do in your free time. You can allocate 50% of your time to actually start. Depending on how, how financially well you are or whether that's your priority. Honestly, I would recommend starting something on the side of something that you actually do and that's bringing you certain inflow of cash on a monthly basis. And then once that's side hustle or, or side business or passion project that you have is bringing at least twice the money. I wouldn't stop working on the, on the, on your day to day job or, or the, the business that you're working in as an employee or, or, or just your day to day work, right? So focus on earning at least twice. If not earn the same amount that you earn in your day job, but make sure that's consistent because, because in a business, most of the time, you don't have the luxury of knowing whether there's ups and downs in the, in the different season. For example, if you do it for one year, you're gonna have pretty much a clear picture. I mean, nothing is for certain whether one year can be taken as a baseline to predict what's gonna happen in the future, but that will actually gonna give you a better perspective of what you can actually expect. So yeah, if you can start doing your business and track the results based on the year, then you're gonna have a pretty good baseline on what to predict in the future. And then you can decide whether that's valuable for you to, to quit your job or not. So let's go to the next one. So number four is pick your business location. That's actually kind of weird because nowadays we live in an online world. People are still kind of working online. They're not actually meeting in the office that often as previously or like on a day-to-day -day basis. So everything is moved away from an actual physical location. I think that's a little bit old school in terms of maybe you open a bakery, uh, maybe you open a bank branch or 
a franchise, let's say Subway or something else in that sort. But in today's world, especially to the younger generation, I don't think they're actually thinking of starting a business that is going to have a physical location. I'm not sure it's actually justified to have a physical location rather than being online and being more agile in terms of, of your business. So let's go for the next one. Well, number five is choose a business structure. I don't think it's that necessary to think about what's going to happen, but just start and get a market validation in the business, start optimizing your, your actual business model, see that you can actually find clients and in what way in terms of costs and everything like that. So as this, I see the value in having a business structure beforehand, try and do not overthink and spend a lot of time on it. Even if you start as a solo failure and having a, a solo proprietorship, I can always change and create a company later on once I have the business validated and I can change things. So don't overfocus, don't overthink this. And let's go to number six. Choose your business name. I mean, the whole list is pretty old school and pretty thinking about brick and mortar, what you're going to put on the side, what you're going to put on the let's say on top of the window, what's the branding gonna be like. But that's, honestly, that's not really important. Choosing your business name is something that is needed, of course. I mean, you have to start with something, right? But uh, honestly, I spend too much time overthinking of, for example, the, the logos, overthinking of how to design the actual name, whether that name is going to be good in terms of like hosting domains and everything like that. But just focus on being easy to spell, easy to remember. And if you can think about adding something that actually shows what the business is in. So if you're thinking about cars, start something that has cars or auto. If you start in phones, maybe have mobile phone technology. So that, that, that's my recommendation on the business name. It's important, but you can always change it later. And just don't spend an overthink this part because that actually can show itself in terms of a fear to actually start executing in the business so don't overthink it just do something create something find a domain and then just move on number seven is register your business i mean from a legal perspective that's super valid and i see the, the positive in it but that can be done pretty much i guess the whole list can be done in a day just start with something, create a name, um, choose an address for your business, um, legalize it, and, and start navigating and just moving on to, let's say it's moving on to my list. Maybe the best case, I'm just changing my opinion as we speak, maybe the best case is go through the list from the SBA and do it as fast as you can. Don't overthink it, don't overspend your precious time on, on the start and then move on to the list that I'm gonna share with you in a bit. So yeah, that's my point on the register your business. Let's go to the next one. Number eight is get federal and state tax IDs. In my country, if I register a business, normally I get the tax IDs and I need to pretty much to find an accountant. And then once the business is starting, then you're gonna start like, showcasing and sending information to the government but i don't think that's valid i mean maybe just have a, like a an accountant that you can rely on maybe your parents account maybe an accountant of your friend maybe just you know spend a couple of hours of researching accountants in your area that you live and find a free consultation and then say what you're trying to start I mean, the best way to learn something or to get feedback is just to ask a lot of questions. And I guess that's pretty obvious and, and to the nose, but a lot of people don't do it. And a lot of people are stuck, even myself. I've been stuck in the research mode for a long time and not actually calling people to get a feedback faster. So that's a, something that you can just use and just, just go with it and call accountants, try to find a consultation and they're gonna navigate based on your state, your country, your specific um, law system. Number nine is apply for licenses and permits. Once again, it's, it's pretty old school, right? It's 
something that you might need in terms of, let's say, health compliance, or if you're in a specific industry, you might have some permits to actually start working. But this is not really valid in in the businesses that I have in mind, basically, basically online businesses and businesses that you can actually start on the side of your day-to-day -day job. Just take it from my perspective and with a grain of salt, do your research, of course. This is not 100% advice for everyone that's going to be relevant, right? Do your research in a specific industry. Like I said in the previous one, talk to your accountant and see if something is needed, but don't overspend time on dwelling on this. And the whole idea of starting a business is to make it faster for you to start that idea of yours. And I'm gonna focus that pretty much on my top eight list. This is number nine, let's go to the next one. So number 10 is open a business bank account. This, I see the relevancy once you create your own company, once you create your own legal entity. Um, I see the value in this, but this can be done, for example, just using an online bank in a matter of minutes from your phone. So those are the top 10 recommendations for how to start your business from the small business administration in the US. I think most of them are relevant, but some of them are pretty old fashioned and pretty brick and mortar focused type of businesses. Go through the list, I'll add the link in the description and go through them quickly. Set yourself a deadline, for example, I'm gonna focus on this on a Saturday and then everything is done. I'm gonna have a clarity. But for me, the most important things is what's happening next. So start with the SBA list, go through it as fast as you can. Don't overthink and overspend time in terms of entity, in terms of name of the company. Just finalize those things so you are legally compliant to everything that you normally would do. But focus on my list a little bit more because that's a little bit more practical and that's actually focused on pushing you to actually start a real business. So yeah, that goes to my list.